Good Hello. evening. Hello. It is after hours at Color Karma. And today I've got Art Schmeling, who is a color bum right now. I got Joseph Zach. He is color manager, color material manager at Kuyu. We got Ryan Stanley, senior director of color and material at PVH. Hey. And Nikki Heiza a soon to be um, footwear cobbler at a non-disclosed footwear company that we can't say right now. That's my <laughs> so, <fault. laughs> Welcome to After Hours. Today's discussion. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Is, if you can see this, white on white. White on white. White on white. So we usually talk about color, but today we're going to talk about white. I should have got a white Russian then. There you go. There you go. On the, for next time. Raise your hand if you've ever seen problems getting whites to match. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then. It depends, you know. <laughs> it depends on what. <laughs> what do you consider a match? <laughs> Fair point. Are you blind? Color blind? UV blind? Well, yeah. What kind of white, right? Optically yeah. brightened white, just you know, like plain old bleached white. Like, what are we talking about? What's our base material? Actually, you bring up a point. What is so this? would readers, would watchers uh, know the difference between a bleached white and an optically brightened white? Well, hopefully. Hopefully. They have tied at home. They definitely do. <laughs> they definitely do. Um, I forgot the name of the company. You can actually buy that blue dye to... to <laughs> optically brighten your whites if anybody's today. ever been to a rave under a black light they definitely know everybody that. yeah and that's really how you can tell Perfect. if your materials have been optically brightened is go to a rave party and uh your whites will light up and that's how you know light. it's like yes but you know it's more fun to do your optically brightened analysis at a rave party <laughs> <laughs> No, but, in the morning. but you know, optically brightened. I mean, again, I come from a print background for us. It's, it's about getting that bright white. Um, and also for different types of materials and recycled materials, um, art, what do you see optical brightening agents used for? Well, I mean, in the past, optically brightened has always been used because as you add in a little bit of OBA, it makes everything, it makes your whites bluer which right. makes them appear visually whiter. Brighter, yeah. So that's the whole reason yep. why we're having this conversation around the optical brighteners. Yep. And that's why people started adding in the optical brighteners. Yep. To be and to your, brighter. to your point, it's a bluer. And, and if I go before we get to textiles, even on paper, the in the US, the paper almost has a yellowish cast. But the minute you go to Europe, you see that bluish cast on the paper. Hmm. You know, so and that's kind of the flip for difference. paper versus textiles. It is the flip opposite for you yeah. in textiles. Yeah, in textiles, um, typically, typically, um, the Far East prefers either yellowish or red casted OBAs. Europe, uh, neutral or yellow casted OBAs, and um, you know, here in the Americas, blue casted OBAs for textiles. So you can tell real quick if. You know, you're you're doing dress shirts or you're making T-shirts or whatever, and you know you add at the last minute another hundred thousand yards to or you know products to your line just to fill an order, and that whole lot comes in and it's like now red casted to your blue cast, and you're like, wait a minute, how did this happen? They pulled inventory from what they were going to give to another supplier in region. There you go. And so the suppliers have it optically brightened by region. Well, it's just preferred. I don't think it's a hard rule, uh, at least not okay. that I've seen, but it, it's definitely, I think it's just, I think it's just general population preference from what I've seen in the industry. And Joe? I mean, that's something new I learned, but like, how did they pick that preference? Like, it's never, like, I didn't go, I wanted a blue optically bright, bright and white. Um, did they just go ask people or they just did it and there's people are just used to it. I think it's probably the latter, right? Yeah. I, what's that movie, um, The Devil Wears Prada, yeah. where she talks about how like you're wearing a sweater that's been you know handed down time and time and time again, and a designer made a decision two and a half years ago, and now you're wearing it. I think this is the result of just maybe however many years of people being 
used to this like europe they're maybe more used to natural fibers so they lean more towards yellow casted or uh, neutral obas in in uh, uh again you know the far east you know india china etc japan um i think they're just used to red casted obas maybe it was because they were easier to produce maybe it was because what designers just happened to like there and here i think it's our my opinion i think it's our detergents <laughs> i think it's just yeah. like the the tide guys or maybe as a part of paper too kind of pulling it in like when you think of white you think of like you know a piece of paper white hey that's a blue cast at oba um tide the blue crystals like we make your whites whiter they for whatever reason picked a blue cast at oba and now just that's what we perceive as you know a bright white a blue casted bright white at least here in the states yeah I a lot of this is like what you're alluding to is a lot of it is cultural it's that mm -hmm. yeah it's that regionality that culture of what people prefer and yeah. it's the preferences that you gain from any white you know anywhere anywhere or how it's be able to you know conveyed in your society where we were talking about the dress shirts earlier, if you think about it, everybody always wanted a very clean, white, bright dress shirt that was going to be right out there in front. So that's why you have the companies like Tide that is putting in those OBAs to make yep. it that brighter, to make it last longer. Yep. Because they had to kill that natural yellowing that would happen with the washing and the wearing and all the other mm -hmm. that comes along with it. You know, and it's then constantly that's refreshing the OBA back into it. Correct. And correct. then that's and then that's where it carries over into the other materials too, because a lot of times if you want a really bright, clean white in your plastics or other, you know, you're going to use an OBA or you're yeah. going to be, it. because culturally that's what we're, you know, here in the U.S. or in North America, that's what you're attuned to. Now, what, I like what you were saying about the other cultures, because depending upon the mix of natural fibers to, you know, dyed or how they're processing it. That's different great. OBAs for different materials, yeah. Yep, Correct. absolutely. And I think, Nikki, you can speak the most to this because I always see the challenge with whites on whites Choose. in footwear, right? How many different colors are in a footwear and different materials in a footwear? Yeah, it's super hard to match. Like if if your midsole is going to be like EVA or whatever, like that's going to that's going to look a different kind of shade of white than a leather or a nylon material or a polyester material or sh whatever your shoelace is you know um so triple white triple whites are always requested but always the hardest and the biggest headache <laughs> i think too that it's been primarily well to your point uh art it's not just it's not just the different materials and the different classes of optical brightener to match those materials but uh nikki i think it's kind of been legacy visual assessments for whites versus an objective assessment like you know traditional color spectrophotometer things like that cie whiteness tint gans greaser whiteness natific's got their own assessment now nwde natific whiteness index um but typically for the longest time there really wasn't a objective way to evaluate these things it was just like you know oh. hey it kind of looks all right mm -hmm. And to your point, even the spectrophotometers have difficulty measuring the whites. Yeah, if you don't UV calibrate. Yeah. I mean, and that's been, you know, from an instrumental standpoint and from there, it, there's always been like an ISO or a defined whiteness scale. There've been differences between what's, you know, what's applied, whether it's in Europe, Asia, or the U.S. Um, from those. But... Yeah, GANS is pretty much in Europe, right? Whereas we right. have um, yeah. uh, the CIE whiteness index. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the biggest challenge is just like what Shoshana was saying, it's really the UV calibration, yep. controlling the amount of UV, you know, that light that's in there to be able to get it consistent so that the number is really, it's a number. It's not just a random number that's generated mm -hmm. based on today's lighting. Yeah. And the more materials, the more complex it gets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, said, I said nylon earlier, but you I mean, you typically don't pick a, a nylon to be a white. white because it'll start yellowing. So, you know, then there's that, then there's that whole thing. And, and to your point, think of the old computers, right? You had those nice brighter colors, but then over time they turn that weird, dirty, tannish, brownish kind of color, right? It's that it's over time, it, it, that deteriorates. 
But so, you have to worry about like what happens or what will affect the OBA over time, right? So whether it be um, temperature, right? So yeah. take bras as an example. I have a white bra and to mold the cup, bra. I'm, well, I actually right have a now. pile of them right here. Um, <laughs> but uh, you, you take a white bra and to mold, like the whole thing's white, right? But to mold the cup, you got to smack that thing with like 140 plus C for X amount with X for X amount of time, X amount of pressure. And one of the things that degrades OBAs is temperature. Yep. Um, yeah. Heat and light exposure. Right. So you're exactly right. Like if you apply different OBAs to a garment or a, or a shoe with different materials, different classes of OBAs across those materials. Now I have fading of my OBAs at potentially different rates, which will make it, you know, look bad. <laughs> and that to that point, it's one of the reasons we talk about standards or even certain calibration chips and stuff. We don't keep them on your desk. Don't keep them by the window, right? You don't want them exposed to light or heat because, you know, that's going to fade over time and change no different than your old photos or anything else like that. Um, if you're working with a lot of materials, cause Nikki, I, I, how many, I've seen so many different types of materials. I mean, do you control it by, by just, do you have a set of whites that you would use or do you have to limit the number of materials to try and get some consistency? I mean, what are, how do you manage that with footwear? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's like an um, an allowed like level of difference in the whites, um, but sometimes you'll just have to make uh, some different material changes, you know, just for that specific white shoe. Um, you know, if you have your if your line is like the vamp is nylon or something, and then you want a triple white shoe, you have to change that to poly. You probably have to change it to polyester. Um, you know, so they're always, they're always like more work than anyone thinks for yeah. footwear. I don't know if it's the same in apparel. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. bras is like the perfect example. Like you're dealing with however many different components, like what on average a bra is at minimum, like, you know, 25 to 30 components. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you have a white bra trying to coordinate, classes of optical brightener across those different components and then you know what's the what's the shelf life where are those things being stored yeah. um phenolic yellowing caused by packaging or the heat caused by shipping um yeah i mean it's 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 a challenge yeah. all over and art you've seen it across other materials especially industrial design in other areas correct oh yeah it's when you think about it when you're talking about materials or items like a bra or even a shoe it's really you're bringing in a lot of the same materials that you're working with in product design because when you think about what's what's included in there with the class with the types of plastics types of even paint on metal or things like that coated parts of it so that's the beauty of a product like that because you can bring it into all sorts of different applications and it, it applies across if you look at it when you're trying to even on a lot of your electronics you know, everybody likes a nice, clean, bright white and being able to, to maintain that. A lot of times you'll see them hidden behind something, you know, a plastic or a Lexan or something to kind of protect them a little bit from that UV to be able yeah. to figure it out. So, so it's funny you say electronics. Did you guys read the article where it was um, whenever they just released or a few months ago released the uh, iPhone 12s? People were talking about how um they didn't look right like the screen didn't look right and when they were on their um setting screen like the white looked slightly tinted green or yellow and there was all these tutorials online about how to go into settings and everything else like that and then a few months after that it turns out that a big reason why people were having so many problems with their screen was because they had their nighttime settings by default like, Oh, set up yeah. by default right yeah. so they're yeah. looking at their phone and they notice it's sitting at home at night yeah. and it goes from like you know it's 7 59 and then it's eight o'clock and like wait a minute my my phone looks my phone does look different <laughs> and then they mess around with their settings and totally screw it up so yeah, yeah. 
So check your iPhone. So yes. So even though we normally talk about color material, today was white and material. So, you know, the different ways and different challenges of white on white. And it takes optical brighteners, which are blue, to make them white. And I want to thank, you know, thank Ryan, Art, Nikki, and Joe for taking the time this evening. Next time, everyone needs a cocktail because this is during cocktail <laughs> oh, hours. Hence done. the background, guys. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so thank you, Nikki. I know you got to run. So I will wrap this up so we can meet your time schedule. And uh, we'll talk later. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. We'll do... Uh...